All right, Carmen du jour comes out of Columbia, South America, and uh, we're going. Whoa, what? Now, our mixing uses lighter fluid. We're going to use it because we don't want to waste a whole lot of time trying to light a fire today. Sure, you see on all the Kingsford commercials that they always use lighter fluid. We're going to use lighter fluid. By the time we get done prepping these four Boston butts, that lighter fluid's taste is going to be completely gone. All right, if you're on Roku and Rabbit TV, we want to say hello to you today. We're glad you're here. And we've got four Boston butts we're going to prep today. Four Boston butts we're going to prep tomorrow. Get our gloves on. Probably the first thing you got to do when you want to work a barbecue, and I'm actually going to wash my hands before I put them on. Get what I understand, Carbon Del Shore is in restaurant supply now. So if you're a vendor out there, Mesquite charcoal from South America lasts longer. And uh, there's actually some mesquite charcoal that Trey's place used, and it's on the videos that I can't explain it. That's the longest furnace stuff I've ever seen. Now, he's just got an open pit, 300 gallon tank. And, you know, common charcoal will last an hour. He'll put it in a row, and it'll burn down the row. But that, Charcoal lasts 12, 15 hours. And I'm talking about, got the 300 gallon tank at 400 degrees. And he can rustle it around a little bit, shoot it back up, or clamp it down and take it down. Uh, for big time vending, I would suggest you always use mesquite charcoal. It just lasts longer. It puts out some big time smoke, get them people smelling too. You know, it's. One of the keys to it is get that smoke flowing so some people's noses get raised up in the air and they're like, whoa, hey, you know, what is that? All right. Well, we're going to open our Boston butts up. Now, these came from Sam's Club. Well, we wouldn't get no Boston butts from uh, Costco because... got no bone in them. I need to check on that. They might have changed. You never know. Now on vending, really, you want as much volume out of this meat <coughs> as you can get. These must look little to me. Now the, the package said 13 pounds, but you got to wonder if Sam's Club pumping them full of water. Because I don't think there's as much meat there as there was. I might be wrong, you know, but it don't look like it to me, you know. Hello? Hey, who's this? John Reeves? Hey, what's you doing? Okay, I'm on television right now. You want to talk a little bit? Alright, hook you up. Alright folks, we got John Reeves on the air. He's gonna be talking about his television show and everything. Now, I'm gonna take you off Bluetooth so it'll be harder for you to hear from me, but uh go ahead. Go ahead. What's going on, man? Well, we are actually gonna try to do a little vending this weekend, get some more money to make it out to uh Lubbock, Texas, where you're at, and uh, what you doing today? beef ribs fixing to hit and then probably half a dozen racks of uh, pork spare ribs going to hit here just about in a couple hours. Wow, you getting ready to do a vending gig? No, a uh, private uh, gig. You know, we do some private catering stuff and uh, we've got a couple families that are going on vacation next week and are leaving on Saturday morning 
and be gone for a week, and they want to take some uh, smoking axe barbecue with them. Oh hell yeah! So what you doing special to it today? Uh, low and slow, baby. That's all I can say. Low and slow. Now a lot of these vending guys I've run up on it now are using mesquite charcoal from South America. How's that make you feel? You know, uh, mesquite's cool. I mean, I think it's a trend. Uh, you know, a lot of Texas barbecues have mesquite in it, but man, too much mesquite makes it bitter. And if you don't use really dry mesquite, and then like the charcoal briquettes and stuff, you know, we, we use Frontier, and uh, I do believe it's got a little uh, mesquite in it, but, you know, too much, less is more with me on mesquite. Mesquite to me is not the end all. I mean, it's not. It's great. I mean, everybody tries to get that mesquite flavor, but um, mesquite is very, it's strong, man, and you can really overdo it, and it makes a difference. Well, John, in my opinion, big show tonight. I know you probably got some great guests. What's going on on the show tonight? Uh, tonight we have Andy with Texas Renegade. They just dropped a new uh, Texas Country album. Uh, they're having a, a gig down in South Texas. They're going to be talking tonight, talking about their new album. Uh, ben Massey uh, has got a new project coming up. He's uh, also in Texas country music. And then also, you know, Brett Galloway is going to come on. He's going to talk about they got the ring in for the state uh, championship, and he's going to talk about it and their state championship. And uh, it's coming up here just um, in a couple of weeks, so really church that up. Now, John, I'm injecting with Sweet Smoke Q, and I uh, got apple juice because of uh, vending. But now, if you was vending, how would you handle your butt? Man, you know, we, we have a blend that we inject our butts with. Uh, don't get me wrong, the base of the blend, uh, you know, over 50%, 75% of that blend is apple juice. Uh, you know, we throw a couple other little things in there that, that make up, you know, 15, 20% of it. But uh, apple juice is a base. You can't go wrong with apple juice and pork anywhere. Now, the thing about vending is you're trying to hit the middle of the road. You want everybody to like it. You got to watch out getting too hot or too sweet. That's exactly right. Uh, with with vending, you know, sometimes it's... it's uh, it is the middle of the road. You have to kind of make sure. And then, too, you know, sometimes I'm bending, I'll ask people for catering. I'll ask people, you know, well, how do you, how do you typically like your stuff? And they'll tell me, you know, hot or spicy or sweet, and I'll try to cater that. But bending, yes, I do believe, you know, you just want all-around good flavor. Well, we're going to treat a little bit like competition. We're going to try to roll it out where – ton of flavor first time ever been down there won a good reputation talk about the first time out man that's really important isn't it i tell you what being the first time on anything um even you know contests you haven't been to before you're not real sure what you want to do or how you want to do it uh, it's very intimidating because you know your ultimate goal is you want people to uh to like what you're doing because you know you're putting your heart and your soul your time and your effort uh, blood, sweat, and tears into this stuff. So you just really want a good product to turn out. So, you know, there's always that you feel confident, but, you know, you want to make sure that it comes out good. So there's a lot of intimidation that goes along with it. And, I, you know, I don't care who you are. I, I, uh, I don't get intimidated easily, but there's always that, man, I hope it turns out right, you know, thought in the back of your head. Well, John, where's your next competition? I think we're going to, our next one, you know, we had a couple scheduled, but, you know, we're taking off some in July. Um, you know, we're doing a show tonight, but we're not going to do a show next week because we're just all going to be on vacation. We're trying to get in vacation while we can. Uh, we were talking about going to Red River, New Mexico, but I don't know. That's kind of up in the air. That is the last weekend of this month. Um, we've got a big catering over in Dallas the first weekend in August. And the second week in August, we will be with you at Breast Fest. 
I'm really excited about Breast Fest this year. Mo Case on. Everybody's piling in. We even got a call from a rival sanctioned body wanting to get in on it. And I just got to ask you, John, uh, uh, Red River Valley, isn't that Red River in New Mexico? Isn't it where that big song comes from? Yes, and there, you know, there's a Red River, New Mexico is just a, basically a little resort town. I don't know the population. It's probably, I bet you there's not 1,500, 2,000 people that live there year round. But that place blows up and it's very limited on space, very limited on lodging. It's really cool to go to uh, during the you know, summer months. And it's just a little ski resort town. The mountain, uh, the lifts actually come right down in the middle of town. So it's just a neat little town. It's in the middle of nowhere. Um, if you're going to Red River, New Mexico, you mean to be there. You're, it's not somewhere you're just passing and you got off the interstate. But it's a super neat little place. And they have a uh, cook-off there. They have two cook-offs every year. One's a Lone Star event and one's an IBCA event. We're both in July. With altitude, I'm not sure what the altitude is. I think it's like seven or eight thousand feet, something like that. Altitude is definitely going to mess with people who are used to cooking in, in different, you know, lower altitudes like us. But you know, it's just a, it'd be a great event to go to. But we just got to get our timing right. Well, trip me out. Got a call yesterday, and uh, rival sanctioned body trying to horn in on Breast Fest. They just want to be there. And it's getting off the chain, you know, BSPN, BWCS, and uh, Barbecue Superstars Radio. All the hosts are going to be there. And Man, what do you think about that rival rival sanctioned body trying to horn in? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you can always tell when you're doing a good job with something. Uh, because that's when everybody starts to copy you. You know, you're going to have people that are going to copy you. And, and then all of a sudden, that's when, you know, certain controversies pop up. And that's the way I feel about it, is that's when you're you're making an impact because then all of a sudden somebody's trying to to horn in on what you've got going on or take credit or put you down. People love to build you up and turn right around and build, tear you down. So when you're doing that, that means you're making an impression and you're actually being seen. So I just, I just kind of blow it off. Do what I do. I know you do what you do. Do the best of our ability and just keep on going. Absolutely, John. Man, you've been such a positive force for Barbecue Superstars, and you've helped us out so much, John. And uh, I just want to thank you for the fantastic t radio shows you do every week. And Now, tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern on Barbecue Superstars Radio, go on John Reeves' personal page or Smoking X X Nation's page. You'll find the link and take you right over to the radio show. And uh, tune in, listen every week. They got a red hot show. I've enjoyed being on it a few times. You could be on it too. And John, what's the number to call? 347 202 0263 is the number to call. Uh, 7 to 9 Eastern, 6 to 8 Central. Uh, call in. We post the link on uh, several different groups. We post the link on our Smoking X page. We post the link on my personal page. Uh, check it out and listen. Call in. I just, that's the, that's the part is we have a lot of fun doing it. I got to ask you one question before we go now. Is Red Dirt Lisa going to be on tonight? Of course she is. We've already talked to her. Since we're going to have um, some Texas country music, you know, some people, it's the yin and the yang. Some people ask us, and why, if it's a barbecue show, why do you have so many guests that are music related? Man, I can't barbecue without firing a radio up. Uh, that's just part of it. I think it's the whole atmosphere of, that goes along with barbecue. So Texas country music is a big part of our lives. And uh, Red Dirt Music with Red Dirt Lisa, she comes on. And she's a hoot. Uh, I'll tell you what, there's no filter. She'd make a great shock jock radio host. <laughs> and uh, she's, just, she's just an absolute hoot. But, uh, you know, we have some musical guests on tonight. We just dropped some new albums. They're huge in the Texas country music scene and uh, have hung out with us and at uh, barbecue events, and uh, so they're going to come on and talk, and of course she's going to come on, and she wants to be a part of it, and learn more about them. So it's just always a good time. Well, I got to give X Nation and Texas Tech tailgating a big old hell yeah, and red meats. Tell us about the red meats from Texas Tech. 
But I'll tell you what, Ritter would need to really take care of us. Um, we have a nationally ranked uh, meat judging team. Uh, we were in there yesterday picking up some brisket. And we do everything in our power to cook exclusively a red or red meat brisket. We don't cook Wagyu. We don't cook the other stuff. We cook red or red meat aged briskets. They're all aged at least 30, 45 days. Uh, you know, like I said, we've got some on the Miss X right now cooking, smoking it up. But uh, it's a really great product. They will ship anywhere in the continental United States. And uh, they're right there on the Texas Tech campus. Uh, went in there yesterday when was looking for our, our contact, and he's in Australia because Texas Tech was invited to be part of the uh, a meat judging process in Australia. So the people that we are getting our beef from are not only national but worldwide recognized. Wow. Well, then they brought out some great points about the way meat supply is going right now and uh, just a lot of great information coming out of Red Raiders Red, Raiders Red Meat. And, uh, uh, folks, we appreciate John Reeves coming by. And, uh, John, you want to say a few words to the people out there? Well, we just appreciate everybody who support us. Uh, this is a great uh, – we have a great time doing our show. Um it's just a lot of fun supporting us on our, our, uh, our foot team, Smoking Axe, and our X Nation radio show. So just tune in tonight. You never know what's going to happen. It's the most fun you can have with only an apron on. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to put the meat on the cooker. We appreciate you calling in. I've got it injected. I've got it rubbed. And John, good luck tonight. We'll talk to you later, bud. Bye. All right, we're going to spin this around right here. John Reeves, always a joy to hear from him. And see how he's doing and everything. And uh, got the big one going on. And uh, now we got our Carbon de Jours rolling. Man, that's a Carbon de Jours crank up. Now that's instant 400 degrees. When it hits the bottom of that barrel right there, that's an instant 400 degrees. On the carbon del jour. Now I got the, definitely got the, oh, hot. And. Alright, so we go. Now we got a baffle that we're going to put in between. Now we don't want to get a fire started. So when the grease starts stripping off that butt, going on a baffle and we got a big grate right here hey it's bunker builder does an excellent job uh frank cox uh iron man cookers he does a fantastic job on those cookers go to smokerbuilder.com and they got a form you can get involved in that form now vending i did not take the fat cap off and i'm gonna do it fat cap up and let some of that heat get directly on that meat. None of that fat's going to run through the pork going downward, but it'll run over it as it melts. Now a lot of people would do fat cap up. I mean down. I'm going to do it up just because I want to be different. Why not? I am going to be able to get all four butts in here. I was worried about that. Uh, man, the Chinese now got a whole Smithfield it's getting more expensive and it's getting more it's getting smaller you know they're gonna do the paper towel thing on us paper towels gonna cost the same amount of money but there's gonna be less in it and uh i guess you guys could tell i'm not very happy that the chinese actually have uh accessibility to our pork meat supply as a barbecue you know pork's very important and uh I don't like the idea of them having ownership of what we're doing. All right. There's two in the grill right there. Now let's go back. Now, folks, I think you hurt yourself if you're a vendor and you're not injecting. You know, I believe 60 or 70% of your flavor comes from your injection. And 
The reason I know that is I've seen a lot of people who don't inject. And that stuff just ain't good, you know. If you don't want to add no flavor, why even go out there? Add some flavor to your meat. A little rub ain't gonna do it. Now smoke will do some. All right, smoke will do some. You gotta put the top on there. The only thing about a dumb cooker is you gotta keep the lid on it. Frank Cox is right. This stuff's done. Already hot. You crank it up. The uh, cooker act like a chimney, just like you do the Weber chimney or. Some of that other stuff and uh all right so here we go we got us two more butts and i'm just gonna go ahead and cook four today and uh it's thursday we're not gonna do it till saturday so what i'm gonna do is cook them all night probably and then uh let's see now you want to look at it make sure there's no bones on the outside of it and no I know these are pretty clean. Really, they're too clean. You know what I mean? <laughs> they're kind of flat. You know, usually a Boston bus like real thick and I just, I don't know. Cutting them different. I think I see some slanted eyes on them. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, 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 that was terrible. That wasn't funny, was it? All right, let me pull some of my injection over here. And <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing wrong with Chinese people that's not what I'm saying what I'm saying is, is that you know uh, pork and barbecue has always been an American enterprise and uh, of course now China's our ally they've done good with us I mean they're friends with us and a lot of good Chinese people out there but you know we talk about a bunch of good old country boys out here cooking some hogs and making barbecue and nobody can touch this man I used to say that nobody can touch this shoot they went and gave it away Okay, I've covered the butt pretty good on this side. Let me get on this side and make sure to see what I put. Now, I'm not wiping any of the, uh, any of the uh, injection off of it this time. And we're trying to instill as much flavor and keep as much volume of meat there as we can because this is a vending gig. Now, that fat cap's not going to do us any good. Of course, the bottom is already removed by the company. They must have been watching Barbecue Superstars and seeing we take the fat cap off the competition. But, uh, Sweet Smoke Q is just the best injection in the world. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to save every bit of my injection today. And, uh, when we wrap, we will wrap and put injection in the wrap and that'll make it a little salty but when you talk about a Boston butt seven eight pound Boston butt that's a lot of meat to try to flavor very difficult What good does it do to inject a pocket full of injection in a spot? I don't know, but when I do it like this, it sure does add a lot of flavor to it. That, that spot will dissipate as the fluid. See, the fluid is going to want to be forced 
to the outside edge to protect the meat. That's his, whoops, that's his self-preservation mode. Well, I sure do miss my chopped power injector. I went ahead and filled the mortar and sent it. And boy, I sure wish I had it now. Hopefully I'll get another one, because of course it did make the show a little longer, but uh, ain't nothing like sticking in four needles in there and pressing that pressure lever and watching that thing blow up. Yeah, when you get you get that injection inside that meat and the heat hits it, it's gonna go out toward the edge. It'll go through the meat when it's going out through the edge. Now it'll never get in the striation, but it will get around the striation. You know, by osmosis, some of it has to get into the striations of meat. I mean, they just taste so daggone good. And you Well, what do you think, man? I got it rolled around in that injection pretty good. That's a whole idea. Get as much flavor on that thing as you can get. And you're out there and you're saying, man, I don't want to spend the money to do injection. Well, they might be dumb enough to call you back. There's too many people doing it now. There's a lot of options out there. Now, Chris Fulmer says when he does vending, catering, he does his full competition prep. Can you imagine the kind of barbecue them people's getting at their parties? Holy moly. That man is doing the magic over there. He's a straight up guy on Monday night, 7 o'clock, Ultimate Tailgater BBQ. He's got the all the tailgater show, and folks, it's getting to be football time again. That man knows about as much about what's going on with game talk football as the coaches do. He's down. <laughs> He's not in part of it. He's all the way down in the middle of it. Something happens, he'll get a call. President of the game talk club. President of the president of the president club. <laughs> He's president of all the clubs down in there. And uh, so, you know, we're really lucky to have him doing a radio show, and I just want to challenge all of you to uh, and we hope Buzz's butt dust will hit us a home run tomorrow. These are butts. These are Buzz's butt dust. I might have to go to selling smoking coals again. Huh? I need to buy a bunch of smoking coals so I can use it on a television show. It's like Junior Urea's rub for grub. Now I'm not using his today because I've only got a bottle and a half left. And I want to save it. Well, so he got a little bit too much Texas on his for a, in the South Carolina barbecue blowout. All right, we're going for a little Cosmo Killer B, put a little sweet on it. In South Carolina, they love that sweet barbecue. Go ahead and coat it down. Boy, look at that beautiful color. Now, folks. Saturday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern, we should hear a whole lot of hell yeahs coming across there from in the South Carolina. I got to take my sign down so tomorrow I won't have a sign behind me, but uh, uh, I ain't putting none on the money muscle. Down in part. Sit there for a minute. We got chalk power injector on the website for sale. Great price. Got it back in stock as of today. 
Child's power injector is one of the best devices for the barbecue in the last 20 years. Dan Euladol, Kansas City, Kansas, police officer. He did one heck of a job when he done that. Heck, we're gonna shoot it right here in his mother muscle. Put a little extra in it. You know, there's a lot of great television shows out right now. Man, look at them butts. Man, that's what I'm talking about. Man, if you're out there on the outdoor cooking channel, uh, boy, don't you wish you was here. Man, I get to do that tomorrow. All them spices and stuff, apple juice and all that soaking into that meat. Man, I didn't have the money or I'd have bought some white grape, but I went and bought the vending stuff for at least 160 meals, and it cost $509. That included just me here. So it's not free. You know, it costs, it is a business. Try to get out here. Whoa. Get out here and do our business. All right, the time is. What time is it? It's time to go outside. Uh, 12.04, so 3 o'clock Eastern, we will be back. And we're going to wrap our uh, vending Boston Buds. For now, we're going to put them.